Warning, there will be spoilers. East vs. West 5 just concluded and I wanted to hop on here real quick to give a hot take about what just happened between Devin Larratt and Evgeny Prunik, and importantly, what should happen next. Devin Larratt is now the heavyweight champion of East vs. West, and that just feels weird to say for a number of reasons, but it happened, and I now see two paths in front of him, and we're going to look at both of them in this video. Let's get into it. Take it, back, take it. The man did it. He pulled it off. He took a match with the best heavyweight the East has to offer on short notice, dropped weight, got the win, and barely had the Kings move, or whatever that's worth. Now, we knew it was going to happen, but let me tell you, there were shenanigans in the setup, after the setup, all the time. I mean, it's Devin, comes with the package. But overall, it was a pretty clean sweep. I mean, you could maybe make the argument that Evgeny won that first round, but other than that, there was a lot of just clean, orthodox arm wrestling, inside, outside, you name it. For the people who don't like Devin's antics, I'm sure he didn't win them over, but for the people questioning Devin's raw horsepower and arm wrestling ability, there's no denying it, he put on a display. As for those two paths that I alluded to in the intro, here they are. Devin is now the heavyweight champion, and there is a strong argument to be made that he is now obligated to stay in that heavyweight category at East First West, that's 253 and below for pounds, and what is that, uh, 115 kilograms? So, I mean, he's the champ. He kind of owes other people a shot at the champ. He can't just take the trophy or the helmet and shield in this case and book it and say, tough luck. So that's path number one. Path number two is taking another shot at the top of the mountain, Levon Saganashvili, which Devin did say he is interested in doing. In fact, I made a video specifically on the comments he made. I'll put that in the link in the description. But yeah, basically Devin said it's a sad existence to not pursue number one in the world. And remember, Devin just beat the guy in the heavyweights. The only way for him to stick to that motto to continue ascending is to look upwards towards the super heavies. The problem with Devin staying in the heavyweight division is that he just beat this guy right here, Prunik, and Prunik himself was just a step above the rest of the pack in the heavyweight division, beating Artem Morozov, beating Matt Mask, beating Todd Hutchings, and now Devin just came in and beat him. So Devin right now is just on another level in that division, which makes matchmaking very difficult. And you don't want just lame matchups where Devin just blasts through the guy. But on the other hand, if Devin bulks back up again, it's kind of a jerk move to come into the heavyweights, take the title and then leave. Because any future heavyweight champion, people are just going to say, well, you only have that because Devin left. And you don't want that kind of asterisk on your trophy. I'm reminded of coach and good friend of mine, Josh Grant, who in 2021 won a WF world title. And when asked if he was going to go back to the tournament in 2022, he said, of course, the people in my division deserve a shot at winning the title back. And I think that's a good way to go about these kinds of things. So does that mean Devin is now locked into the heavyweight division forever? No, I don't think that's appropriate either. There's a middle ground here that we need to find. And I think what makes sense is that Devin stay in the heavyweight division for at least one more good challenge. You have people like Sandra Sedis, who's on the rise, and I'm sure he's thinking about Devin, he's watching the tape, and he's training his butt off for that shot. And I mean, I'm not saying he's the one who's gonna get it, I'm just giving him as an example, but someone needs at least one more chance to legitimately take the title away from Devin before Devin moves on to other ventures. I suppose technically there is a third option here where Devin bounces around between the heavyweights and the super heavyweights, where one month we get to see this Devin close to 300 pounds, and then the next month we get to see a 253 pound Devin like we just saw. Uh, but with how frequent the East versus West events are, I don't think that's a good idea. You know Devin likes to take a long time to prepare and study his opponents, and so fluctuating weight classes like that all the time just don't seem to jive with his style it's probably not good for him physiologically so i think it's better for him to just pick one of the two lanes i just laid out here and stick with that so that's my hot take for the day i apologize if i messed anything up i just spent six hours watching this incredible event but yeah let me know in the comments what you think if you agree with my assessments what you think devin should do and if you like the video please leave a like and if you think i earned it subscribe i put out multiple new videos every week and i will see you in the next one <laughs>